I will be making some forward-looking statements, and uh, you know there are risks and uncertainties. So please have a look at the uh, disclosures. Uh, it's available on our website at goldenminerals.com. So it's been, uh, as Chen mentions, a very exciting and interesting year for us at Golden Minerals uh, with the startup of our new mine at Rodeo. Um, no, it's always. Uh, you know, a pleasure when the mine starts up according to plan on schedule and on budget. Um, it's performed very, very well. And just about uh, as predicted, we broke even at the uh, property level in the first quarter of the year. We broke even as a company in the second quarter and we made money in the third quarter. So we've converted ourselves from being a money spender exploration company to be a money producer, uh, a profitable company, which was the plan. And we have a growth plan going forward to start the second mine, the Velardania property, which we've had for some time. And it has had you know, some challenges that we think we've solved. And we're looking forward to making a positive production decision um, in the, the, the year in 2022, in the first part of the year. We also have a pipeline, a strong pipeline of exploration properties. We're drilling you know, one right now, the Oquivo district in Chihuahua uh, State, Mexico. Um, and we'll be continuing to report results from that as we go along. The properties that we have are located uh, mostly in northern Mexico. That's been our focus. Um, and so we're in the states of Durango and Chihuahua principally, uh, which I find to be some of the easier states to operate in. We're also in Salta province, Argentina, the best part of Argentina in my opinion. And that's where that uh, El Cavar project is that uh, Eric has, uh, a Barrick has, pardon me, um, on an earn-in basis. So a bit about the company and, and why you should invest in us. Uh, we have cash, we have no debt. Our cash balance grew from Q2 to Q3 by $2 million. So we're growing cash despite you know, some fairly strong exploration spending. And that's all based on, on the Rodeo production story, the net uh, proceeds from uh, Rodeo. Now, the Rodeo, as Chen mentioned, uh, came in uh, on target. We've actually produced more than we had planned. So we we're producing at about 500 tons per day. Um, and we were able to do that by installing a second ball mill to get the fine grind that gives us a good uh, gold recovery from the process. Velardania is the next part of the growth story. Uh, we're planning to build a bio-oxidation plant to oxidize the pyrite, arsenopyrite concentrate and then extract the gold via a cyanide process at our oxide plant. That will give us a much better gold payable than we've historically seen. Uh, historically, the gold payable has been quite low, and that's been the biggest challenge for the project. So we have that solved. We're just waiting for final studies from work done by Udotech in South Africa on uh, concentrates to define you know, the operating uh, parameters for the Biox plant and details of the capital cost. We have quite a bit of value in PEAs published, uh, you know, well, well more than our, our current market cap. Uh, so obviously we think we're quite undervalued at present at the uh, 50 cents per share, uh, share price US. Uh, looking at our, our production assets in Mexico, you know, the reason we are able to put these mines into production at low capital cost is that we already have the mills, we already have the underground mine with all the infrastructure, the mining equipment at Velardania. And at Rodeo, uh, it was a fairly simple project, not requiring much infrastructure. And we're using a contract miner to get the production going. We didn't have to build a mill other than install a second ball mill at uh, the oxide plant. And so it really didn't cost us much to get going. So Rodeo is a very highly profitable mine. It's a shallow open pit. You can see a picture of the high wall looking north here from a couple of months ago. <clears throat> you know, basically the gold mineralization, it's low sulfidation epithermal in volcanics and it runs just right down the northwest trending ridge. So we're just taking off the top of the hill. Uh, waste ore ratio is less than two to one. Um, and the high grade of the deposit Average grade 3.3 grams per ton gold. You know, gives us you know very good uh, uh, metrics on production. These are some of the milestones we've gone through uh, here for the early part of the year, and so we reached our full production rate uh, in May or end of April, 
and from there, no production has been pretty much on plan. So we're scheduled to produce between 12,000 and 14,000 ounces of gold this year, uh, which we're right on track to do at the upper end. And the net margin, operating margin, and after-tax cash flow figures are also right on track. So a bit about the uh, production growth over the first three quarters of the year, you can see we ramped up production in the upper left there from about 200 tons per day on up to over 500 tons per day. And we'll keep that production level around 500 tons per day, which is the best point, it's a sweet spot that gives us the, the best opportunity to um, you know, get the fine grind that we need for the gold extraction. Payable gold produce. Uh, actually, you know, f follows the tons per day process, as you might expect. Um, and we're, we're producing more than we had planned, basically, on a daily rate, with uh, just under 5,000 ounces produced in Q3. The cash costs have, have come down uh, as we uh, had the, the higher throughput through the mill. And now we're in the expected range of the mid $800 per ounce of gold produced uh, net of silver credits, which are minor. Um, and, and that's where we'll stay. So there's about you know, $1,000 an ounce margin there. Quite nice. And you can see our, our, our operating margin has come up here in, in Q3 to about where we expect it to maintain with about uh, you know, $8 million, um, of, of revenue for Q3, uh, about half of that as uh, net operating margin. A bit about these uh, <clears throat> most recent really good drill results. Uh, the uh, 20 meters of, of eight grams is beneath the current plan pit, so this will expand the resource. Uh, we're doing the resource modeling now, and we'll see you know, just how much of the mine life we can extend. Uh, but I certainly expect to report that we'll be able to mine longer at these higher grades as we go forward. So the next part of the growth story is putting Velardania back into production, as I mentioned. And to do that, we're going to have to build this biooxidation plant. Uh, from the 2020 PEA, we think that cost about uh, $6 million. We need to get you know, more detail on that. We think that prices have gone up. Not quite sure how much. It'll cost a bit more. So we want that number in hand before we make the decision. So we'll go through the, the economic study once we have that uh, early next year. Now, Velardania is a high-grade asset. They're, they're underground, mineable, narrow veins, uh, high gold, silver, uh, lead, zinc grades. And you can see some of the grades are, you know, they're really quite strong, about five grams per ton gold and over 300 grams per ton silver as averages. Uh, the resource we have has translated into at least a 10-year mine life, producing about 2 million silver equivalent ounces per year at a low cash cost of about $9 per silver equivalent ounce. So quite profitable um, according to the PEA plan. The combined production uh, uh, profile for the two properties, in blue you can see the projected gold equivalent ounces from Rodeo, about uh, 15,000 per year, including the silver. And then as we get Velardania into production in 2023, you can see the production basically almost doubles to something close to 30,000 gold equivalent ounces per year for the foreseeable future. So that's the ex exciting story about the future, the growth, sustainable, profitable cash flow for the company. So the catalyst in 2021 going forward, uh, we'll have you know, further reports on the, the good operation at Rodeo uh, with you know, make, meeting our metrics, obviously. Uh, we'll have the resource model done to see what the expansion looks like and the extension of the mine life looks like. And we'll have the uh, details of the Velardania startup uh, with hopefully a formal decision for the resumption of production sometime in early 2022 with the possibility of production later in the year. We also have some exploration projects with drill results coming out. Uh, Cerita Este in Salt, Argentina, and Yokivo, <clears throat> that gold-silver district in Chihuahua. Um, for more information, please contact us. Uh, Karen Winkler, Director of Investor Relations. Contact information is here. And obviously, I'm at the booth here for the rest of the day. Thank you very much.